Further to the other video where I showed you how easy it was to download the GPS file of the Hyacinth Trail and save it onto the newer GPS units which accept GPX files directly. It was simple. We just plugged in the GPS unit, in that case the GPS was the uh, Garmin Oregon and we could save that GPX file onto the drive that came up. But these two units pictured here, they're older and they don't accept GPX files so easily. And GPX files are, are now the, the basic standard for GPS files. But these are older units. Um, on the left we have an e a Garmin e Legend CX, which is what I'll be using today. Um, there were seven or eight different models within the e range, right down from the very basic yellow e up to ones like this. And on the right we have a unit which has been quite popular with hikers, a Garmin GPS Map 60 CX. Now neither of these units accept GPX files easily. But what I'm going to show you is how to put them on. Now Garmin's provided a couple of pieces of software to allow you to do it. Um, the program they're currently running is Garmin Basecamp and you can just Google download Garmin Basecamp and it'll come up. Um, they have earlier programs such as Garmin Map Source, but they don't support that program anymore and this is probably the pick of the programs. So you can download that and install that program and that will allow you to transfer the GPX file onto your GPS unit. So just the same as, so just like we did with the Garmin Oregon unit, we're going to download the GPX file. So I'm on the maps page of the Hyson Trail website. There's a couple of files here. There's a KML file, and that's for viewing the Hyson Trail in Google Earth. But what we're looking for here is a GPX file. And that's the file that we use with all handheld GPS units. So I'm going to download that file. GPX files are generic GPS files that are can be used by most modern GPS units, but not the couple that we're looking at today. So if we look on my desktop, you can see the GPX file that I downloaded. And here's a shortcut for Basecamp, which I've already installed. So I'm going to open Basecamp up. And what we see here, Map of Australia, we see up in the top left, we've got Library, My Collection. It's empty. And we've got devices, and I've got my Etrex Legend CX connected. And again, it's empty, there's nothing to show. So, first of all, I'm going to open the GPX file of the Hyson Trail. And so, we go to File, Import. And if we find the GPX file, we can open it up. It takes a few moments to import the data, and we can see what happens. And you can see here we have a lot of info. So, we can zoom in. And there we have our Hyson Trail. A bit hard to see, but that is the whole Hyson Trail. And there's two elements here. We've got the waypoints. There's Tree Campground. And moving on, there's Tunkalilla Beach, Tappanapa Campsite. And the grey line here, that's the Hyson Trail itself, the tracks. And we want to load them onto our GPS unit. So if I zoom back out again, I can see all the trail. And I can use this arrow here to choose the trail, to select the elements that I want. I can actually just select a portion of the trail if I want. I might need to zoom in to do that. But you can see it's highlighted everything on the left. Everything highlighted. And all I need to do is just pick it up and drag it onto the all data bit of my um, GPS unit. And you can see that it is was sending the waypoints. And now it's sending the tracks. And it's really that simple. Um, one issue with the these units is that they have a limit on the number of tracks that they accept and the number of waypoints that they accept. And this can be a problem at the moment. So, for instance, if we look back on the Hyson Trail website, we see a list of limitations of some of the older units. And this applies to the Garmin e Legend CX. Um, it can only accept 20 tracks, but there are 31 tracks in the Hyson Trail file. It can accept up to 5,000 points per track, which is not a problem um, for this unit. Um, and this unit has no problem with 150 waypoints. The problem here is the 31 tracks. So what will happen is it will load the first 20 tracks, and then it will load the next 11, but it will overwrite 11 of the first 20. And it's a bit of a problem. So 
what you'll need to do when using Garmin Basecamp is that you won't be able to put the whole trail on. You'll only be able to put part of it on. So it might be that you just choose the southern half or wherever it is you're walking um, and use this to choose what you want. You can of course delete things to try and make it simpler as you can see so that you can just get what you want and then you move them onto your unit. So that's the way you manage it. So yeah, happy hiking.